Hello and welcome. My name is Anna McDougall. I'm a former opera singer turned web developer. And today I'm going to be talking about the different parentheses in JavaScript. Now, normally I do videos that are under three minutes, but for this one, I wanted to take a little bit longer to explain it because I know it can be a source of confusion for a lot of people who are newer to coding. So let's talk about three different types of brackets that you see in JavaScript and when each one tends to be used. I will go quite quickly through this, but feel free to stop, go back, rewatch different sections, try them out, all this kind of stuff. I, I really encourage you to do that. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go quite quickly. So we have firstly, the first type of bracket is these round parentheses. Now these are pretty much only used for function parameters and arguments. So for example, we have function, my func, parameter one, return, parameter one. Yeah, who knows? Parameter one plus five, <laughs> whatever. Okay. So here you can see we have these brackets. Here are the, the round brackets. Now I, I have put here, and I, I want to just talk about this for a second. When this is the singular, when there is one of them, this one is a parenthesis, parenthesis. When you have two or more, i.e. plural, they are parentheses and they are spelt with an E. This is something I have seen people of all levels get wrong. It is not super important. I'm just being a little bit pedantic, but it's a nice way to sound like you know what you're talking about when you say parenthesis for one and parentheses for more than one. So I just thought I'd throw that one out there for you. So these are used, as I said, here in functions to kind of show you what they are. For example, we've got arrow functions, you know, that use them like this. Um, and then here again, it's outlining the parameters. And if they don't have parameters, then they're empty. Uh, we see them a lot in methods, of course. Uh, so we've got um, string one dot repeat. Oh, actually, not a great example. Uh, let's try string one dot. Oh, isn't it typical that the moment I'm making a video, I completely forget what string methods exist, even though I've just made so many videos about them. Um, yeah, okay, there we go. Perfect. To lowercase. There we go. I swear, I swear I know methods. I know methods. I do this. Uh, string one dot to lowercase here. And so you can see it there with the empty brackets. Again, this is saying this is a function. I'm calling that function, but I'm not passing any parameters into it. Um, of course, you can pass parameters into it as well because string one dot uh, repeat five, and this is going to repeat that string five times. Uh, so these round brackets are really used for functions. If you see round brackets, you're doing something to do with functions. That's the takeaway here. Um, so let's just scroll down Yes, I mentioned here also for arrow functions, as I showed up here. Let's scroll down here. So let's have a look at square brackets. Um, now, technically speaking, when we say brackets, this is what we're talking about. But the parentheses are so often referred to as brackets that to be safe that you're talking about the same thing, I, I feel like it's easier to just say square brackets and avoid a lot of confusion. So we have square brackets, and they are used mainly for two different things in JavaScript. The first is to describe the contents of an array. Um, so let's see, we can have um, fruit array. I should probably give it, declare it properly. Fruit array equal um, bananas, apples, oranges, All right? So here, these square brackets are denoting, we are working with an array now. Hello, this is an array. This isn't a string, this isn't a number. This is an array object within JavaScript. So that's, the, that's you know, the, one of the main ways that we use them. The other thing is to describe the index of something. So now we want to pull out apples and we can say let second fruit equal fruit array. And then we have this brackets and we say one because remember that with indices we start at zero. So bananas is index zero, apples is index one, oranges is index two. So here we refer to index one. And so here obviously this with these square brackets we're not defining an array right? This is, this is just a number, but we are putting a number inside square brackets and that means we're using an index. So that's the other way we use square brackets. Now, the last thing we want to look at are the curly brackets. Now, curly brackets, oh, there is so much I could say about curly brackets, but I'm going to try to keep it relatively short for all of you. Um, the first thing is that they use to define blocks. <sighs> 
blocks. This is how we start getting into conversations about scope. Um, I will leave a link to my blog post about uh, scope and closure down there in the description. Um, but the important thing to note is that when you say a block, it's like a little universe in which this code exists, usually a block of code that does something or achieves something. Uh, and it's it creates a scope, block scope. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, let's say um, function add num1, num2, right? And here we go, uh, let or const result equals num1 plus num2, and then we return result. Okay, let's do something like that, right? Now you can see here, these curly brackets are describing everything that's happening within that function, right? It's saying this is the body of the function, right? So if block isn't working for you as a concept, um, you can think of it as a body. I like to think of it as a world or a little universe that exists of its own. And um, each one of these curly brackets creates a different little little universe. So whatever imagery works for you, but that's one way to think about it. Um, we also use them in if statements all the time. So if um, a equals b uh, console.log, Yes, <laughs> right? So again, we have these little curly brackets here and we're saying, okay, when this criteria is met, um, do all of this stuff in here. We could do lots of stuff in there, of course. Blah, blah, blah. We could do lots and lots of things. Um, all of that is within these curly brackets. This goes for loops as well. I mean, really a lot of different things use the curly brackets to describe what is going to happen in there. Uh, and that that is the block. Right. The other way that we use curly brackets is for an object. And um, you can see more in my uh, JavaScript in less than three video about objects. But simply put, um, we can say, <laughs> I'll just scroll down a little bit here. Uh, let's obj1 equal uh, name, Anna, channel, YouTube, whatever. Right. And here, this is not a block. This is not a block scope, right? This is simply saying this is what, this is an object. This is kind of like our array with the square brackets. With objects, we use the curly brackets and it's the same idea. So those are the main uses of the brackets, of all three types of brackets inside JavaScript. I hope you found this useful. Please do like, comment and subscribe and or follow me on Twitter, whatever you feel like. If you don't want to do any of them, that's cool. It's your life, whatever. But uh, I will see you next time and I hope you have found this useful. Bye.